or like the one I'm most tempted to speak because I know it so well, the one that goes like this. Oh, my lovely Lutheran ladies, drinking coffee strong and good, baking cookies by the hour, doing everything you should. Yeah, I know you're always pleasant. Yeah, I know your manner's mild. Thinking grace is yours through hot dish, tuna noodle with a smile. <laughs> but my lovely Lutheran ladies, yeah, you betcha God loves you. Even though your Lutefisk dinners taste a lot like Elmer's glue. <laughs> For the love of God is wider than the boundaries of the sea. Oofta, oofta, alleluia, Lutheran ladies, by grace you're free. <laughs> Maybe it's time to reinstate the live coal in the commissioning of <laughs> disciples. Beginning with the pastors. A live coal touched not only to our lips, but to our ears and our eyes and our hearts as well, because maybe by the power of that refining fire, we might get to the heart of what we are called to speak, the heart of the word. In the same way, my poet friend David Bengtson got to the heart of it one day while writing poems with grade schoolers in his home state of Minnesota. He writes of that experience in a poem entitled, What's inside. Writing poems with a class of fifth and sixth graders at the elementary school in Gray Eagle, Minnesota, I try to help them imagine the extraordinary surprises that might be found in ordinary objects. A leaf just beginning, a leaf about to fall, what might happen if we could travel inside the world of an orange, an acorn, an apple? I show them my wife's Russian nesting doll, Matryoshka. I open the mother and carefully lift out each of the delicately painted peasant children, line them across the table until I hold the last one smaller than my thumbnail, and I wonder aloud what we'd find inside this doll if we could travel that far. I hold out a round stone the size of my open hand, and wonder what might be inside. Another stone, says a student, and inside that stone, I ask. Another stone, and another stone, and another stone, they echo. When we are finally left with the smallest grain of sand, if we could go inside, I ask, what would we find? From my right, as though a young William Blake has joined us, comes an answer, quick and confident. We'd find the universe, he says. Not so different, perhaps, from the 13th century abbot who held up an apple in the presence of his fellow monks and posed the same question. What's inside, he asked. To which one of the monks responded, the fruit of the apple, and inside the fruit of the apple, asked the abbot. Seeds, answered another. And inside each seed, the abbot queried further. Silence filled the room. Ah, inside each seed, the abbot said in amazed reverence, is an orchard. Have you ever noticed how we churchy people tend to spend a lot of time focusing on what's outside, namely the skin of the theological apple? The skin with all of its favorite questions to ponder, like how many angels can balance on the head of a pin, or what day the end of the world will actually arrive, or which drawer of the kitchen to put the spoons in. Or if Mary was really a virgin, 
or whether or not the scoundrel who confesses the lordship of Jesus Christ on his deathbed actually gets to go to heaven, have you ever noticed how we churchy people spend a lot of time focusing on those kinds of questions with their accompanying black and white, easy to manage bumper sticker answers, which, says Barbara Brown Taylor, is a lot like studying the menu without ever tasting the meal? or spending our whole lives learning the stuff in the field guide without ever going into the field, or perhaps like speaking eloquently and convincingly about the shiny, smooth quality of red delicious apples, all the while forgetting that inside the skin, inside the fruit, inside the seed is an orchard. What would it sound like if we, as people of faith, started to talk about the universe inside the grain of sand or the orchard inside the seed, what word would we speak in the midst of the mess in which we find ourselves in our particular time and our particular place? What's inside all those lovely outside words like church, Lutheran, scripture, sin, salvation, redemption, sanctification, judgment, heaven, hell, mercy, grace, stewardship, evangelism, Jesus, God, Holy Spirit, Trinity, incarnation, resurrection, love. What's inside? What would possibly break forth into an orchard if we spoke the word? The pastor of the Lutheran Church of my childhood taught me the word inside all of the outside words, beginning one night during confirmation class when we were all bored out of our minds studying Luther's small catechism. Sorry. None of us could imagine how anything our pastor was trying to teach us had anything to do that was meaningful to us, or anything to say of interest. Nevertheless, it was a night I shall never forget. For our pastor sensed our boredom. He walked over to the light on the wall next to the door, and he turned it off. And then in the darkness of a cold, clear Illinois night, he invited us over to the windows where he simply said, look at all those stars. This is the pastor who taught me the word inside, all the outside words. The word that runs throughout scripture from the first page to the last, he said. Do you know what the word is? I'm going to give you some hints. Once when a young woman was dying of cancer, a friend gave her a round stone with a hole in the center. The young woman who was dying couldn't figure out what it was. Nevertheless, with a little bit of strength she had to muster, she held the stone up to her eye. Ah, she whispered after a long moment, now I see it's the way through. During the Holocaust, a group of Jewish prisoners in a concentration camp decided to put God on trial on charges of negligence and abandonment. Over the course of a number of days, the witnesses spoke powerfully against God as the rabbi, taking the part of the judge, listened. At the end of the trial, the rabbi said, In light of all the evidence given during the past few days, I hereby indict God on all the charges and declare him dead. Nevertheless, night is falling and it is time for evening prayers. Come, let us pray.